Hello, my name's Sally Lunt, and today I'm going to talk to you about the two times table. I'm sure you're already brilliant at counting, and that means you're really good at using your one times table. When we look at numbers in a times table, we have to use multiplication to form those numbers. The first number in the one times table is formed by working out the answer to one times one. This cross symbol here is a time sign or a multiplication sign and it means that we have to multiply and we're going to be working out what that means today. So the answer to one times one, what that really means is one lot of one. So we're saying it's just equal to one, one lot of one. And if I add a one lot of one onto my number line here as well at the bottom, you can see we get to the answer of one. The second number in the one times table is formed by working out the answer to two times one. And that means we're looking at two lots of one. So it's one, add another one. And all together, of course, that gets us to two. And if I put my second lot of one onto my number line, you can see I get to the answer of two. And the third number in my one times table is formed by working out the answer to three times one. And that really means three lots of one. So it's one, add one, add one. Three lots of one being added together, and that gets us to the answer of three. And if I add that third lot of one onto my number line, you can see I get to three. And then the fourth number in my one times table, well, that's formed by working out four times one. And that means four lots of one added together. So one, add one, add one, add one, four lots of one being added together. And that makes four. And if I add my fourth lot of one here onto my number line, you can see that I get to four. And that is how we form our counting numbers. This is the one times table. But today, we're going to be focusing on our two times table, counting in twos. So let's have a look at this. The first number in the two times table is formed by working out the answer to one times two. And that means one lot of two. So that gets us to the answer of two. If I put my first lot of two onto my number line, you can see that I reach two. The second number in the two times table is formed by working out the answer to two times two. And that means two lots of two. So we're adding two and another two. And that gets us to the answer of four. And if I add my second lot of two onto my number line, you can see that I'm getting to four. The third number in my two times table, well, that's formed by working out the answer to three times two. And that means three lots of two or two plus two plus two three lots of two being added together which gets us to six and if i add my third lot of two to my number line you can see that i've reached six the fourth number in my two times table well that's formed by working out the answer to four times two and that means four lots of two added together so one lot of two two lots of two three lots of two, four lots of two being added together. And that all together makes eight. And if I add my fourth lot of two onto my number line, again, you can see that's lining up to eight. The fifth number in my two times table, well, that's formed by working out five times two. And that means five lots of two added together. So two, add two, add two, add two, add to five lots of two, making 10 altogether. If I add my fifth lot of two on, you can see there on my number line, I'm at 10. And one more for the moment, we're going to think about six lots of two, or six times two, the sixth number in my two times table. So six times two, that means six lots of two added together. So you can see that's three, four, five, six lots of two being added together, and that gets us to 12. <clears throat> if 
I add my last lot of two on there, you can see again on my number line, I've got to the number of 12. OK, so I've got a little bit of a challenge for you, or rather I think Maureen might have a challenge. So let's have a look. Can you colour in all the numbers in the two times table up to 100? So what we're doing here, we're thinking about counting in twos. So we know that first number, one, two, the first number in the two times table is two. If we count on one, two more, we'll get to four, two more, six, two more, eight, two more takes us to 10, two more takes us to 12. And what I want to know is, can you get to all colour in all the numbers right the way up to 100 that happen to be in the two times table? So, Cuthbert's going to have a bit of a think, put his thinking cap on. And if you pause the video here, you can have a go yourselves, see how you get on. And then when you're ready, unpause and we can have a look at the answers. OK, how have you got on? Ready to have a look. So here's my grid and here are all the numbers that you should have coloured in. Does your grid look like mine? Did you get all of the numbers that I've got coloured in, coloured in as well? OK, and then I've got a little question for you. So all of these numbers, there's a very special name that we use to describe all of these numbers, all the numbers in the two times table. I wonder if you know what it is. And it might be that you do already know, but if you don't, here's Maureen to help us out. So all the numbers in the two times table, we call them the even, even numbers. OK, and what we're also really interested in in maths is a bit of pattern spotting. And I wonder if you can spot any patterns for the two times table. And you might want to pause the video and have a really good look at these coloured in numbers here to see whether there's any patterns you can spot. OK, shall we have a look? Maureen has got a bit of a clue for us on the next slide. Let's have a look. So Maureen says all the even numbers either end in a, ooh, can you think, what do they end in? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's see. A two, so Betty says a two, or a four, says Cuthbert, or a six, or an eight, or a zero, absolutely. Okay, so all of the even numbers Every single even number will either end in a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or an 8 or a 0. Absolutely. And I wonder if you know this next thing. So if you have an even number of objects, you can always share it into two equal piles. You'll always be able to share those objects into two equal piles. And should we put that to the test? So let's have a look. Here are some apples. We're going to have eight apples. Eight's an even number for Betty and Cuthbert to share. Where are those apples? There they are. OK, so we'll give one to Cuthbert and one to Betty. Another to Cuthbert and another to Betty. A third to Cuthbert and a third to Betty. And one more for Cuthbert and one more for Betty. Ah. And can you see, look at that, each of them has got exactly the same number of apples and they've both got four apples. OK, so what we're going to do next is we're going to have a look at all the numbers that we didn't shade in. So remember earlier with our one to 100 grid, I asked you to shade all the numbers in the two times table. Well, this time, we're going to think about the numbers you didn't shade in. So here is a grid. All the numbers that I've coloured in this time, all of these ones, they are the numbers that are not in the two times table. And I wonder, do you know what we call these numbers? And again, you might already know, but if, you, if you're not sure, here's Maureen. We call them the odd numbers. And can you see any particular patterns with the odds? Maybe a little bit similar to the even number pattern that we found. OK, let's have a look. So odd numbers, again, the ending of odd numbers will always be either a one 
a three, a five, a seven, or a nine. And you can see that, can't you? Here, all ending in one, here, all ending in three, here, all ending in five, here, seven, and here, nine. Absolutely. And when you have an odd number of objects, you can't share them into two equal piles. And should we have a look at that? So let's have a look. Let's let Cuthbert and Betty share some more apples. But this time we're going to share seven apples and we know seven's odd. OK, so let's have a look where are those apples. There we go. So one for Cuthbert and one for Betty. Another for Cuthbert and another for Betty. Third one for Cuthbert and a third one for Betty. But oh dear, they've got three each but we've got one left over. What can we do with that one left over? Oh, I think Maureen's got an idea. There we go. So we can't share those out equally between just two people. And that will always be the case for an odd number. You'll get one left over when you try to share it out into two equal piles. OK, now, I've got a bit of a challenge for you. So this is your turn to have a go at answering some questions. So for the first set of questions, these ones, we're going to be counting in twos to answer those questions. So you need, might want your one to 100 grid to just double check on answers here. And in the second set of questions, they're quite difficult because you have to find the missing numbers. It's a bit like working backwards. So how many lots of two do you need to get to 16? OK, so what you can do is pause the video here and have a go at working out your answers and then you can come back in a minute and have a go at marking them. OK, how have you got on? Should we have a look? So the first question, seven times two, the answer is 14. And second, Four times two is equal to eight. Ten times two is equal to 20. And two times two is equal to four. OK, and now to find the missing number. So something times two makes 16. What's that? Eight times two makes 16. Something times two makes 10. And that something is five. Yes, five times two makes 10. Something times 2 makes 22, and the answer is 11. And something times 2 makes 2, that answer is 1. Great. OK, so I've got another little challenge for you. So look at the numbers here on the sheet, on this, on this slide. I want to know, are those ones odd or are they even? And we've got a little bit of help. I've got Cuthbert here who says, remember, even numbers end in a two, a four, a six, an eight, or a zero. And a little bit more help, because we've got Maureen here telling us about the odd numbers. And odd numbers, remember, they end in a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine. So again, have a go at pausing the video here and try to work out the answers. And then we'll come back in a minute and mark to see how you've got on. OK. Let's see how you've got on. So 24 is even because it ends in a four. 32 is also even because it ends in a two. 57, well, that's odd because it ends in a seven. 86 is even because it ends in a six. 71 is odd because it ends in a one. 90 is even because it ends in a zero. 123 is odd because it ends with a three. And 348, that's even because it ends with an eight. OK, so that's just about all we've got time for today. But you could always have a little look around your house. Maureen's got a really good suggestion and she says, why don't you find some different objects around your house? It could be some socks, it might be some jumpers, it might be your teddies. And count them up and have a look and see, do you have an odd number of teddies or an even number of teddies? Or do you have an odd number of jumpers or an even number of jumpers? 
And you could also have a go at sharing out, for example, your teddies into two piles and see whether you can do that. If it's even, you should be able to share them into two equal piles. If you've got an odd number of teddies, you're going to have one left over if you try to share them into two piles. It might be quite fun doing a bit of sharing. And don't forget to have a look at the website as well. So the website address is www.cusputthecroc.co.uk and there's lots of information about number, there are some activities that you can have a go at and there's also some books and some stories that you might be interested in um, having a look at too. Okay, so thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.